communism for these children the, 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 the students of chairman gonzalo and these kind of people you're seeing on twitter who are zoomers they're zoomers who are androgynous completely have no regard for any kind of gender sexual realities completely foreclose the name of the father and instead uh, engage in what the french thinker deleuze would call the jouissance the enjoyment of partial drives so for example within psychoanalysis there is the kind of oedipal drive that you get your jouissance from which is based on a specific uh, relationship between the subject and the father and the mother and so on and this this kind of uh, triad right whereas the jouissance of partial drives which is celebrated by people like Deleuze and so on and so on is you derive this fundamental death drive enjoyment the surplus enjoyment psychic surplus enjoyment if you will from a kind of completely uh de-patriarchalized de-edipalized reality where there is no one father there's multiple there's a multiplicity of different objects partial objects of enjoyment you never latch on to one melodrama that defines you so for within a patriarchy you have hamlet you have shakespeare you have the greek tragedy one confrontation one story one drama right that defines who you are but with the uh, what Deleuze will call the jouissance of partial drives you never become too attached to one object uh, to go through this drama you have a multiplicity of partial enjoyments and so on and so on never actually never actually accomplishing this more fundamental confrontation of the subject how does this become possible in psychoanalysis there's a term I can't really explain to you all of psychoanalysis, so please bear with me. And if you kind of get what I'm under, what I'm saying here, that would be enough. I, all you have to do is kind of get it. You just have to kind of get it, right? There's something called the foreclosure of the signifier. So in psychoanalysis, very briefly, we have signifiers. Uh, signifiers are not the same as signifieds. Signifieds are like the external objects or the things that come to your mind when something is signified. A pure signifier, right, is the relation between... So it sounds like a word, well, like with language. So think of a word, right? Let me, let's say I say the word communist. So the word communist has a signifier. Now, when I say communist, you think of the signified, the, the, the concept or the image that corresponds to it. But behind this word communist lies a signifier. And this signifier represents the structure of our unconscious that leads to these signifies. So when I say communist, there's something in my unconscious that makes it coherent and makes it sensible, right? So, those is what signifier means. So, a signifier is a relation between itself and all other signifiers. They're metonymic. So, the signifier per communist is only ever going to be able to define itself um, through other signifiers. So, there's a chain of signifiers, this chain of equivalences, right? If you have a signifier for an apple, right? What does it mean that it's metonymic? Well, what is an apple? In order to define an apple, you have to compare it to other things, right? So an apple is something that's going to be defined based on its relationship to other things. Apples are fruits. They're, it's the whole thing of genus and classification. They're fruits. They're like bananas. So there's a chain of signifiers. And all of them just refer to themselves, to each other, right? They, you never get to a point where a signifier can merely refer to itself. It's always based on where it is in the entire chain of signifiers. And this entire chain of signifiers is something in psychoanalysis that's called the symbolic order, okay? Now, in the symbolic order, there's a master signifier. And what is this the signifier of? What does the master signifier signify? What is the signified 
that corresponds to it. Is it a specific image? Is it a specific signified? Is it a specific concept? No. The master signifier is the signifier of signification as such. The signification, the signifier of signification as such. The very signifier of the symbolic order itself, the whole order, which means the, the symbolic order is not something you take for granted. It's partial and determinate. It's human, right? It's not dwelling out there in cosmos. It's human. It's our humanity, right? So the master signifier is the signifier of signification. Okay? Signification itself. It is the one signifier in the entire chain of signifiers that refers only to signification as such. The very possibility of signification as such. It is their relationship to the master signifier, otherwise known as the phallus or Freud or the name of the father that allows us to possess an adult relationship to the symbolic order. An adult shoulders the world of meaning independently. As an adult, this is a bottle of water. As an adult, this is a bottle of water. Not because someone told me so, not because an authority said so of some kind, but because I have somehow made it intelligible as such myself. So if I have kids, I can explain to them how shit works, but I have this independent grounding of my reality, right? Yes, the master signifier, very good, yes, expresses the meaning and order of all the other signifiers. But meaning is very important. This sounds like the platonic good. It is the platonic good. It is the platonic good. The only difference is that the platonic good confines itself to thought. But the master signifier is not just about thought or concepts. It's about the structure of our unconscious. And Plato has no room for an unconscious. He's a philosopher. So for Plato, it all begins with the idea, right? The idea, the idea. And the self-identity of the idea, right? So yes, it is the platonic good. That's why for Plato, Plato is the most patriarchal philosopher in the history of mankind. Are you kidding? For Plato, comprehension of the good is something only the master can accomplish. Not just the patriarch, but the master, the Greek master who is not a slave, but the master of slaves, right? That's the master, the master who wields the signifier. I mean... Lacan calls it the master signifier because it is the master of Plato. It's Plato's master who comprehends, has an independent comprehension of the good. And that's the same thing as the patriarch, right? The father, the name of the father. The master signifier requires the psychological framework of the unconscious mind to be conceived. No, no, you're overthinking it. Peterson is a Jungian. I'm a Lacanian. What's wrong with Jung? He's full of shit. So what does this have to do with the shit I was talking about with communism? And the community of runaway children. That is what communists are in America. Today. In a event... So first of all, what separates a child? Thank you, Noble Woman. I completely missed your subs. Thank you for the five. Missed that. Appreciate it. So what is it exactly that separates a child from an adult? Thank you, Johnny. In Lacan's uh, framework. For Lacan. For Freud. It's a specific uh, stage of uh, the Oedipal complex, right? 
where entrance into the symbolic order as such um, has not yet happened. So what does it mean to enter the symbolic order? Before your entrance into the symbolic order, you have something called the imaginary order, which is the order of images. So for Lacan, when in a child enters the world, the first form of meaning that's going to be uh, that they're going to have to make sense of things and the world is going to lie in the image, the presence of the mother. The presence of the mother for whom uh, you are the object of the other's desire, namely the desire of the mother. The mother loves you, she's taking care of you, rock my baby, on whatever the fuck, right? That's the imaginary order. Why? Because the imaginary order is strictly defined by the complete unity of the imaginary other, right? with you as a subject and as their object right so but in the imaginary order the mother's absence is what happens you start crying and screaming and whatever why because in the mother's absence you have what complete absence of any meaning so it is the consistency of the mother's presence that attaches you to some kind of world of meaning right now, entrance into the symbolic order happens, and this is Freud's Oedipal framework, which is not to be taken literally, when it becomes clear that the mother's desire is divided. The mother does not only desire you, you as the subject, she also seems to desire something beyond you. For Freud, that is her husband, which is the father. So, the child begins to view the father as being the reason why they do not have the full enjoyment. They don't have full jouissance. They don't have the full undivided desire of the mother. So that the father is stealing it from them somehow, right? So that's the beginning of the Oedipal conflict for Freud. The, the conflict of the Oedipal complex, right? The father is something the mother desires, not just you. So the object of the mother's desire is not just you, it's somewhere else. It's something else, namely the father, something else. So entrance into the symbolic order happens when you have something called symbolic castration. And this castration for Freud is when the father it's an experience of like this kind of uh, metaphor of castration where the father takes away from you your full jouissance, your full enjoyment and forces you to uh, possess some kind of lack in its stead. Before the only lack you ever had was when your mother wasn't in the room. You had just pure lack, pure lack, right? The father engages in this... The father initiates the symbolic castration through um, taking away your phallus, right? The phallus is what? The signifier of signification. You don't have full access to it. Full, undivided access to the phallus. Sorry, to the... Uh, you do not possess full, undivided access to the other. So you do not possess... <coughs> Uh, you do not alone possess the phallus. Does the master signifier play a role in the bed? No, that's through Lacan who introduces signifiers because of his introduction of semiotics to psychoanalysis. So before this, it's all Freud's direct, <coughs> like literal uh, interpretations. When Freud talks about father, he's talking about actual fathers. When Lacan talks about father, he's talking about the structure of language. So Lacan's a kind of structuralist or a post-structuralist, right? He's not talking literally about this stuff. Uh, Freud also doesn't only talk literally. Like when he says castration, he doesn't mean literal castration, but he's referring to myths. 
to describe real phenomena. So, one enters the symbolic order when, having been deprived of their full jouissance, they begin to pursue their desire uh, and acquire their jouissance in a partial way. The father prohibits you from fully having the mother, right? Fully having access to the mother. And this prohibition, this fundamental prohibition, defines your subjectivity in a, such a sense that you seek jouissance in another, right? This is another woman, basically, right? Uh, with that prohibition in mind, right? So this is the beginning of adulthood, more or less. That's the beginning of adulthood. That's the beginning of adulthood. Why? Because as a child, you have the imaginary order. In adulthood, you go through the uh, symbolic castration, and eventually the symbolic castration becomes resolved when you recognize prohibition, this prohibition is somehow a key to your own necessity. So you become the father eventually, right? Because why is it the key to your necessity? Because you, your uh, jouissance, your enjoyment, becomes structured in such a way that this prohibition becomes necessary. So this is what it means, the name of the father. The name of the father reminds you to and why. Shut the fuck up. There's too much to explain when it comes to psychoanalysis. It's literally so much to explain. Like, I didn't talk to you about how this fits within the world of meaning and language and signifiers and all that kind of stuff. So I'm just going to say this to try and simplify it, okay? We don't have to go through psychoanalytic theory. We're just going to simplify it, okay?